beautiful maven with daddy you will stay and if a human tries to harm you i'll simply say <laughs> because your daddy's girl one of the things that makes you know movies like this is of course uh the uh, artistic nature but um one of the things that stands out first of all is the cast how did this cast come together uh was it um Smigel who put it together because he comes from Saturday Night Live and then it goes Adam right. Sandler to that or how did it come about? No, no, no. It was it was definitely started with. Uh, it's funny because like before I came along, we already had uh, a few of the like Steve Buscemi was already on, Kevin James was uh, uh, was Frankenstein, and then once Adam came on, uh, everything kind of started to fall in place. You know, uh, we had Frank Drescher before also, and then uh, CeeLo Green, uh, and so it's kind of you know Adam brought David Spade in. And then a few others, and then you know John Lovitz. Uh, but yeah, everything kind of came together with that. Now, with this cast, especially their voices, it always comes up fast. You know, uh, very jokey and funny mm -hmm. uh, in my mind. You know, when I see them. Um, but uh, a lot of your stuff could be, you know, uh, considered very stylized too, especially your own style. How did you kind of meld those two together to get this? It was, you know, it's kind of going into it. I knew we wanted to do a very broad comedic film, you know, and so. Uh, it was funny because like I did a pass over the script first, and then uh, you know when Adam Adam liked it, and then Adam and Robert started to kind of adjust some of the things that I wrote, and it was interesting because they kept a lot of it, and then just kind of tweaked the jokes left and right a little bit, you know. But I was kind of in the in the ballpark with the the sensibility of the humor, so that made it a lot easier because then everything can kind of blend together, you know, in a really nice way. And then whenever we would have meetings and you know uh, and riff on jokes and stuff, it was always you know you're always a little uh, Insecure about it because I'm like I'm not a you know not a professional comedian. Right. I've been saying that live, you know. So I'm just a kid compared to what they, what they've done. And then I'm like you know sitting there and everybody's riffing. I'm like, you know, I came up with a good joke. I thought it was a good joke. And I'm like, but I, I don't want to say anything, you know. And I'm like, you know what? Forget it. I'm just gonna say it. And if they don't laugh, so what? You know, they can't fire me. <laughs> so I just went ahead and said it. But then Adam laughed, and then it ends up being in the movie, and it makes you feel so good because you can operate on on that level. Um, can you talk about the um, the process in this? Because it's a little different than your usual animation, which means, you know, the word rendering and timing takes a little bit longer right. than, than your usual schedule. How did that work play in too? It, uh, it actually wasn't an issue at all, because it's, it's really like when we start working on the animation, you know, CG is it's so fast now, it's even faster than hand-drawn stuff, you know. So that wasn't an issue at all, We you know, uh, and everybody worked so hard, but you know, I'd see an animation shot, I'd give my notes, do some redrawing of it, and then, then, you know, the next day or the day after, I would see it, you know. And then once we got into lighting, it was the same thing. It was, everything is so fast now that they work a lot faster. Because I think I was more like you, I was like thinking like, oh, this is going to take forever, I'll give a note, then I'll see it next week. But it's really instantaneous, the way things, things go now. Uh, does it open your eyes as to, you know, future ideas? In my mind, I'm, my first request is always a Samurai Jack movie, but, right. <laughs> uh, you know, does it open your eyes to possibilities like It does. That? It's really, you know, the thing about CG is it's based in reality, right? All the tools are made to, uh, to render things like the real world, you know? And for me, that's the worst thing you could do. Like, for me, it's like, we have to make things look like real, but they're not real, but they're its own thing, you know? So it definitely opened my eyes up and I actually developed a whole movie around that thing where I want to have things completely alien looking, but they're familiar textures and feelings, but they're not what we think they are, you know? And they're all kind of like looking at me like, you know, this is what you want to do. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you want to push, you want to break out of reality. That's the whole thing about animation, it's a caricature. And that's the thing, I was talking with some other friends before about, you know, your style and how movies like this would change. And I said, in my mind, uh, if I saw Samurai Jack, it would look something like Little Big Planet looked almost like it was like almost flat paperish right, right. look on top of you know those things. Um, uh, so um, with uh, this movie coming on, um, are you uh, excited to move more into the the movie foray? I mean, you, uh, you're with you're signing with Sony, correct? Yes. So that's something that's definitely going to move forward as well. Um, are you excited to? Um, reach a, a, a larger audience worldwide as well. As, I mean, you, you have the, the TV, but the movies, I think the, the publicity behind them and the machine yeah. behind them just seems to, to, to push through the doors of houses. It does, definitely. I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it's a much bigger scale. And, you know, the thing about television is that you, 
you know, you, you do an episode every week or whatever, and then, you know, you do a bad one, and it's like, you know, people forgive you, they know maybe the next one could be better, right? And with features, you work all this time, all this energy, and all the publicity machine, like you're saying, and all this big push for one weekend. You know, and if you don't connect with the audience that weekend, then that's it. You're done, you know. And that pressure of it is huge, and thinking of it that way, you need to be really, like, like, you got to be precious with everything, but at the same time, you still want it to breathe and feel like it's, there's a spontaneity. That's one of the things about I love about TV, where I could have an instinct about something, I draw it, six months later, it's on the TV, you know. And that's it's a great result, because then I can see right away, like, ooh, that was a bad idea, <laughs> or it was a good idea, you know. And so, in the features, it's that one big opening weekend, and it is, it's, it's around the world, you know, it's, it's huge, and it is on a bigger scope, but you want it, you know, like, I've always wanted the TV stuff to explode out, to be as huge as it possibly can, because it's like, I don't want to make a, you know, I don't want to make a TV show or a movie for five people. You know, I want to make sure it's as broad as it can be. Now, um, with, with your, your, your past projects like the TV things, um, you know, as you move forward, is it fun to come to things like Comic-Con to see that they're alive and in everyday lives for a lot of people? You know, even though you move to the next level and the next stages in your life, and you love the characters you made, you're on to the next thing. But these people still live those things, you know, in their houses on a regular basis. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the amazing part of it. I mean, one of the things that, uh, you know, people ask me what I'm most proud of, and it's creating Dexter and Samurai, creating these characters. I think especially Dexter, because it was my first one, that he still exists. It's always, almost been 20 years, you know, and the people still mention it and still watch it on Boomerang or wherever, you know. It makes me feel so great, because not a lot of shows, there have been so many animated shows, and very few last, you know, last the test of time, you know, and and Dexter's still out there, people still talk about it, you know, if I do a signing, I, I you know, draw at least 30, 40 Dexters, you know, and same with Samurai, you know, people, the still idea that people still want to see a movie of it is great, and then, you know, every year, I have some new producers come along, they go, we want to make Jack a feature, I'm like, all right, let's do this again, and then, you know, whatever happens, happens, but, you know, it does, it feels great. You know? Um, going back to Hotel <clears throat> Transylvania, um, the tone of this movie, like especially, like I said, with the cast, because you know they bring out the characters. Um, did you make sure to bring in, I guess, um, some kind of heart and emotion to the storyline as well? Because sometimes movies are just fun, 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 and they throw it at you. But sometimes they try to get a little introspective and a little kind of try to bring everyone into the house and throw a blanket over them, kind of. Yeah, thing. I mean, the the most important thing is with the comedy is there's some kind of core. At, at the bottom of it, you know, it's hard to watch the Three Stooges just do slapstick for two hours, you know. <clears throat> so we definitely wanted to have a strong emotional core. The story is about Dracula and his daughter, you know, it's very easily accessible, you know. Anybody who's a dad or has a dad, uh, you know, they, they can really connect with that story. And then you drop all the jokes on top of it, you know. So we do, like, I really made sure that we have a very strong core and, and that we kind of write it in and out of the movie, and, and, and hopefully it all kind of came together nice. Uh, is there any uh, cartoon after, after after the credits or anything? That <laughs> we do have a special uh, little end credits thing that we did. That's, oh, very cool. That's more of the, you know, what you think of as Gendy or whatever. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, one of the things that uh, I mentioned in the blog, I don't know if it's correct, but uh, is Popeye something that you're looking, you're going to be looking at in the future? Or you can't yeah, definitely. It? You know, I just signed a you know, two-picture thing with yeah. Sony and uh, one of my original ideas and then Popeye, you know. And what really excited me about Popeye, because at first I was like, ooh, I don't know, you know, Popeye is such a thing that I loved growing up, you know, but it's, it's old, you know, and um, I wouldn't want to, you know, put a baseball hat on him and sunglasses and contemporize him so much that it's not Popeye anymore, you know. But then when I talked to him, I go, well, this is what I would do with Popeye. I would make it physical, and it would be a really physical animated movie, that the jokes are, you know, about the physicality of it all rather than a funny line of dialogue or a funny line observing something or pop culture, you know. And it's silly, and it has a broad tone, and Popeye's Popeye. You know, he still talks the way he does, and olive oil isn't pretty. She's, you know, she's the way she is. <laughs> that's that's going to be interesting. How are you going to yeah. transfer someone who's plain Jane into today's world of <laughs> without yeah. making them look unbelievably just kitschy and weird? No, but I think, like, I think like if you, like, really believe in those concepts and those ideas, and, like, I don't know, it's going to be a challenge for sure, but... It's something they said, yeah, we want that. And I said, okay, well, let's, let's do it. Let's try it. You know? But to have an opportunity to do a, a broad physical comedy is what I'm into animation for. You know, like we used to do Dexter's episodes where it's like, you know, seven minutes of one joke. You know, like Dee Dee like wanted to show Dexter a new dance and he tries to get away from her. You know, it's like those things I get a lot of uh, satisfaction from. You know? So that's what, that'll be the goal of it. 
right. Well, we look forward to it, and we look forward to uh, Hotel Transylvania and uh, whatever you can come from, you know. Uh, make it bigger, better, make them pay for the best we can get. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. All right.